Today we're going to learn about a group of animals called echinoderms. In this group we have sea stars, sand dollars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. What they all have in common is actually given away by the name. So if you break that down, echino means spiny or bumpy, and derm means skin. So these are spiny or bumpy skinned creatures. Perhaps the most obvious when you think about it is a sea urchin. It's got those nice long spines that stick out. Um, but sea stars and sea cucumbers tend to be bumpier. Another thing these creatures have in common is what we call pentaradial symmetry. So they all have some form of this. And most obvious is our friends, the sea stars. So penta meaning five. So they have five body parts that radiate out from a central disc. So this sea star here has five arms. Sometimes they have more than that, but it's usually a multiple of five. So five, 10, 15, or 20, or more. Another thing these creatures have in common is an endoskeleton covered by a layer of skin or an epidermis. And this skeleton is made up of ossicles. So these are bony plates that fuse together by some connective tissue. And some of them, like sea cucumbers, they can control the rigidity of that skeleton, which is pretty cool. So they can make themselves ooey gooey or really hard like a rock. Lastly, these creatures have a water vascular system. So instead of blood pumping through their body, they pump salt water through. They have a pore called a madreporite, and that pulls salt water in or out to um, maintain the pressure inside of their bodies and also help them with movement. Um, so they have podia, or tube feet that come out and can grab and hold on to surfaces. Um, and that helps these creatures move. Some of them can move up and down the sides of rocks. Um, and so they use that water vascular system to help with pressure and locomotion. So you can find sand dollars in sandy bottom habitats and they usually burrow themselves just beneath the surface of the sand. And they'll use their spines to do that. So they move along in the sand to find food to eat. So these creatures are eating detritus, which is broken down organic matter. So you can think of it when a plant or an animal dies, that breaks down into small pieces that get mixed up in the sand or the sediment. And our sand dollars move along and they eat that out of the sand. So this is a sand dollar that we just collected out in the Gulf of Mexico. On the top, perhaps it's the most obvious how you can see it's five parts. So it almost looks like petals coming off of a flower. These are um, what we call ambulacra. They're just the five parts of the body of the sand dollar. And around them, little tube feet come out and help with respiration. And so they're pretty hard to see with just your eyes. In the middle here is what we call the madreporite. This helps the sand dollar uh, maintain pressure in its water vascular system. So it can pull in salt water through that. And then these holes are called lunules. Um, and the function of those is kind of debated among scientists. Researchers think um, it helps prevent the sand dollar from getting lifted by a current. So let's say some water comes and pushes against the sand dollar. It can pass through it instead of flipping it over or tossing it around. And then they also think they may help with feeding as well. Our sand dollar is covered in tiny little spines all around the edge of its test as well. Now we're looking at the bottom of the sand dollar or the oral side, and that's because their mouth is located underneath and it's right in the center. And then you can see lots of spines all moving around all over the bottom of the sand dollar. Here we have a sand dollar test or their skeleton. So sand dollars and sea urchins and sea biscuits are a little bit different because they have this nice hard skeleton, this test that they make. Um, and then if we flip it over, you can see there are these sections here, five of them, going towards the center, towards the sand dollar's mouth. And these are their food grooves. So using both spines and their podia or their tube feet, they can move particles of food that they'd like to eat towards the center. You can think of it like a conveyor belt, helping them move food towards their mouth. 
So a prized find for beachgoers is a sand dollar test or skeleton. Um, and sometimes people may not know how to tell the difference and tell whether one is alive or not. So right now, probably the most obvious is the color. A live sand dollar is gray, sometimes greenish or purplish even, and their test is white. Um, the skin and spines are gone and it usually gets bleached by the sun too if it's washed up onto the beach. So color, spines are another indication that this creature is still living. Um, in fact, if you look closely, you can see them moving as well. And another thing that happens is that your fingers might turn slightly yellow when you're holding a live sand dollar. These creatures can ink. So when they are nervous or scared, sand dollars will ink and ours ink yellow. So when we find a sand dollar that's alive, it's important that we put it right back down into the water and lay it down gently on the sand. These creatures need to be in the water to breathe and feed and eat. So we can't ever take them out. Um, if we do remove them from the sea, they will eventually die. So never take a sand dollar if it's living.